We will respect your right to engage in collective bargaining. And this is important too, we're going to defend your right to free speech, including your right to speak out about unconstitutional COVID vaccine mandates imposed by the current administration. We're going to abolish every single mandate and we're going to fight to rehire every firefighter who was wrongly terminated with all the back pay that they deserve. We're going to deliver the equipment and the funding, the support and respect you all need to do your job. And we're going to seal that border. And here's another promise. We're going to protect your pensions because heroes like you deserve to retire with dignity and to enjoy the blessings of the country that you helped build and help protect. And it's not just words. It's not just promises that I'm making. I am actually a co-sponsor of the Social Security Fairness Act, and I'm proud of it. I think it's ridiculous to penalize our firefighters in retirement for doing the right thing and fighting for our communities. A lot of Democrats call us populists, like it's something of an insult. But if being a populist means being on the side of working people rather than the powerful elites who hollowed out our middle class and sent us into stupid foreign wars, then sign me up. I am a populist, and I'm proud of it. For decades... Now, for decades, unions have given support to Democrat candidates without giving Republicans much consideration, and I'm not here to judge you or to blame you or to criticize you. I am here to tell you that it's a different world now. You may have noticed that Donald Trump is not exactly like Mitt Romney or some of the Republicans of the past. He is a different kind of Republican. And under his leadership, the Republican Party is the party of the American worker. Now just think about the Republican and Democrat conventions we just had. It says a lot who each party chose to put up on that stage. At the Republican convention, we were featuring everyday American workers, and of course, we had Hulk Hogan. And while it's tempting, and I'm sure it would make some big headlines, don't worry everybody, I'm not going to try to take off my shirt here, but at the Democrat convention, it was a parade of celebrities and billionaires. It felt sometimes like every celebrity except for Hulk Hogan was at the Democratic National Convention. And I don't blame anybody for being famous or for making money, but you cannot be a champagne socialist who supports open borders and pretend that you're a friend of working men and women. It doesn't make an ounce of sense, my friends. It just doesn't. And I just want you to hear it from me that I understand. But I want you to hear a story, a very personal story. When I was 12, my mom was in the middle of a terrible, terrible addiction crisis herself. She struggled with it for most of my early childhood. And I remember during a particularly bad episode, I, I called 911. Like so many kids who have kids who, who have parents who struggle, I called 911. Now the firefighters, the EMTs, and the police came. They calmed her down, but as you all know, they calmed me down too. They calmed my sister down. They did that public service that only they can do. Now, years later, she took something else that she shouldn't have taken. And the firefighters and the EMTs, they saved her life and took her to the hospital where she lay in a coma before eventually waking up. And I want you to know that for us, we did get a second chance. And so if you're ever worried that you're not making a difference, listen to this from the sad and tearful 12-year-old To a 40-year-old who's now asking to be your vice president, you do make a difference. You make a difference every single day, and I thank you for it. Now, while overwhelming America's firefighters and EMTs, Kamala Harris's open border policy, it's also depleting our budgets. New York City Mayor Eric Adams, not a fan of mine or President Trump, said that illegal immigration will destroy New York City due to the huge financial strain, which is about $12 billion over the next three years, and that's just in New York City. The mayor announced sweeping budget cuts that would slash $300 million from the fire department and cut the number of police officers to the lowest level since the 1990s. And it's the same story all over the United States of America. Illegal immigration cost Chicago taxpayers $361 million last year. Denver is shelling out $180 million. Washington, D.C. is paying $36 million. 
If we don't secure our border soon, my friends, our cities are going to have to cut vital police, fire, and emergency medical services to the bone. And it's you, you who's going to suffer, and it's the people you serve who are going to suffer. We shouldn't be forced to spend billions of dollars on people who aren't even supposed to be here. We should be spending that money on schools, police and fire departments, and our citizens. And under President Donald J. Trump's leadership, we will. I just heard on the ride over here that the New York City Fire Marshals Benevolent Association has endorsed the Trump Vance ticket. I, of course, want to thank them for their support.